and you're not completely dumbfounded and humbled and mind fucked by the profundity of this quote unquote answer, you haven't gotten it. That's how crazy this shit is. In a way, before awakening and afterwards, everything's the same. But everything's also simultaneously, profoundly, absolutely, utterly different. Can't be more different. If you were to put the Frank Kane character from like just a year ago to this quote unquote Mitsu here and experience the war right now, he'll be like, what the fuck? This is, this is, and then I'm gonna be like, oh, this is your most natural state, bro. And then he'll be like, what, am I tripping on 5 email DMT? Am I having a breakthrough? Not the visual kinds, because the visual still forms. I'm talking about the, the, the context that gives rise to form, which is again, absolute infinity. Nothingness. God, so obvious. My well-being, since well-being has been increased, my brain power, perceptual power, I feel like I microdose on every drug imaginable, just naturally. 90% less suffering. Even if your goal is to be a CEO or a bodybuilder, this awakening shit is worth it. Do it. offer you a more specific technique uh, for total unification, cosmic consciousness. So if you practice mindfulness, you are focusing on an object of meditation. And that object could be the breath, it could be sight, it could be sound, it could be thoughts, it could be emotions, it could be a picture of a deity, it doesn't even matter. Once you have enough focus and concentration or one pointness or samadhi, any more attempt to vipassionalize the sensations or the object of meditation could actually make you go backwards or make you get stuck. Now what you have to do is just relax, surrender, and do nothing. And then that one pointness, that samadhi, to the one single point of the object of meditation would start to be transferred and transformed into a field of infinite space. So every particle within this field will automatically, without your help, connect themselves because the mind would naturally be inclined to return to its natural state, to the source. That's the big daddy of all flow states. But that's not the end. Even if you feel like you're connected to the entire universe. If you're still feeling like a meditator in here, meditating to the entire universe over there, then that's not the final form of formlessness because there's still a separation between the meditator and the meditated. You have to extrapolate the meditator and turn it into just another object of meditation that's no different from any other sensations or objects of meditations. Once you do that, there's going to be a total unity, one-to-one -one unity between the perceiver and the perceived. So the subject and the object are occupying, so to speak, at the exact same space-time with no distance at all. You realize that that is the core of being. You can't go deeper than that. Actually, depth. It's not even the right word for it because again, infinity transcends distance and layers. Keep in mind that the unification is there already since the beginning of time. It's your mind that's creating the separation. It's the, it's the limit of the imagination that's creating that distance, that duality between you and the universe. Anytime you have a thought, that's why you can't imagine this. The imagination is actually a process of condensing or collapsing infinity, the formlessness of infinity into a finite form that you come to identify as you. So in some sense, you're literally one thought away from having a glimpse of absolute infinity or having an enlightenment experience. Um, but anyway, you still need to practice to get there. People that just get it like that, it happens. That's why you hear this, uh, those fables in Zen literature. But it still requires high degrees of concentration, power, 
clarity and equanimity to be able to hold that state and make it a default, most natural state, moment to moment. The mind, the sense of self, is no longer confined inside the meat suit, but it's... And even awareness doesn't even need the character's help to be aware. It's always and already totally awake, by itself, as itself, of itself. And every moment that I experience feels like a boundless, even hologram reflecting on itself. Awareness penetrates through everything and looking back on itself through and through the body-mind, which is also holographic. Okay, so another way to get to the core of this, to get to the core of reality, quote-unquote reality, um, is through this uh, method called self-inquiry. It's the ultimate koan. Who am I? Well, the better way to phrase this is what am I? Um, that's the ultimate question, right? That's the ultimate question for anyone. Who am I? If you figure this out... Whatever is looking out through those eyes right now. Someone asked me on Instagram today, that's why I decided to make this video. Um, he said that he, he's, he felt like his thoughts were hijacked. That he didn't feel like his thoughts were his. So he asked me, whose thoughts are those if they're not mine? The, the answer is pretty obvious, if you got it. That question is the same from the matter of direct experience. Us asking, to whom does the cloud in the sky and the cars and the houses belong to? They arise in the same space, quote unquote space. Again, infinity transcends time and space. Shh. Same quote unquote space for lack of a better word. They rise in the same space as anything else that you perceive, your thoughts. But since that space is utterly and completely empty, it's a total nothing, that's everything. It's infinity itself, quote unquote Godhead. But I don't want to slap too many labels on it because that's just going to further confuse you. It's the same space, right? So that space belongs to no one because he has no attributes and no qualities. He has no locations. Before when I heard about this method, uh, popularized by Indian sages uh, like Ramana Maharshi, you inquire into the nature of self and of reality. So at first when I heard about this method, I was like, what the fuck? This is such a stupid question. How would this question lead me to enlightenment? Of course I know who am I. Of course I know, I'm Frank Yang. See, that's the insight you might conjure up. And then if you say, okay, I'm not Frank Yang because I read a little bit of spiritual mumbo jumbo uh, textbook. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not this body, I'm not this mind. So, oh, I'm, I'm reality, I'm the universe. See, any word, any concept, any labels, any, any answers are generated by the mind, is not it. And this pr just this process of getting to a sort of this point where you might just sort of stand still and become silent is a pretty long process. Because you gotta go through all those different names and identifications and categories and attributes and qualities that you are assigning to your sense of identity throughout your whole life. You have to like peel them off layer by layer to even to get to the point of silence. And when I first started doing inquiry, when I got to the point where there was just silence, I was like, man, maybe I got it. I was like, who am I? So I waited for an answer. Okay, everything that the mind can generate is not it. Okay, now just silence and stillness. I got it. No, I haven't gotten it. Because if there's still a delay between the question and the answer, the question, what am I? The answer, oh, silence. Now my mind has nothing. That's still not it, because there's still a delay between the question and the answer. That still presupposes that there's a separation between you and the universe, between you and reality. There's still a distinction between the subject and object. Even if the delay is one nanosecond, then you still operate within that paradigm where there's still a subtle screen of consciousness. There's no screen, there's no mirror, there's none of that. You are directly plugged into the source right now. But you're your lens of perception hasn't been cleansed yet. So if you really got it, there should be no delay at all. The answer and the question arise simultaneously in the non-location of infinity. Ultimately, there is no quote of an answer. So the moment that you can find yourself, you found yourself. When you fucking die. Seriously, how fucked up is it? That you think you know who you are and what you are your entire life, but when you really try to find it, trying to inquire, do it!
the door and disappears. You can't find it. You can, you just. But fuck yourself aware. So whatever is looking out through those eyes right now, in Zen Koan, what your face looked like before your grandparents were born, that's the face. It's the same looking that's been looking since I was three till now. This, this avatar changed a whole lot. I went through like 20 million different Balkan cuts, but that looking is still the same. So whatever it is changing cannot be true. Whatever is not true at this present moment right now, which is infinity, and eternal, and permanent, is not the truth. And Frank Yang, not just himself, but his entire life, all the events that happened were merely the product of imagination that arise spontaneously through the empty space of the Godhead. Again, whatever is looking out through those eyes right now is not a person, not a biological entity. It's nothing. It's infinity itself, quote unquote Godhead. It's not even a nothing because a nothing is still a label. See, see how tricky this thing is? But it's somehow, some way, in the most mindfuckery way possible, it's self-aware. And because he has no location, it's not inside your head. Your awareness, consciousness, or yourself, quote unquote, true self, is not inside your head. Your head, your body, your mind, everything's inside it. But there's no inside and outside at the end. You see what I mean? So, this is so fucked up. It's all pervasive and omniscient. There's no location, no size, no dimensions. No shape, no form, no smell, no distance, no quality. There's nothing that could be conceived of in the realm of the imagination or thought that could even come close to describing this thing. It's your fucking true self. See, enlightenment is not even an experience. It's not a state that changes. It's the prior condition in which all your experiences arise and pass into. But the character or the mind will produce a kind of experience like bliss to deal with such a deep realization. But that's a byproduct. And if you think you figured it out, if you got it, if you whirl in the, your sense of self, your entire mind isn't just completely shattered to the point where it doesn't exist, you haven't gotten it. That's how crazy this shit is. Epilogue. Now this is the most important point that most people who got really high in their spiritual pursuits still don't get. Emptiness is form, form is emptiness. I've repeated this like a million times. If you really discover your true self as nothing, everything is you, but nothing is you. If infinity doesn't include paradoxes and contradictions, it's not infinite, is it? The world alone is Brahman. Here. Here, this is it, this is it. Your mind might start to uh, conjure up some questions and, and assumptions and, and, and skepticisms. How do you know? Well, if you are part of reality, no separation, let me just put it this way. Of course, it can know itself thoroughly and directly, more direct than direct, closer than close, this realization, this truth. Because it is itself. Of course, it can know itself so obvious of course consciousness can't be directly conscious of itself because it is nothing but itself